Hey guys, this is Trey with Camwood Bats, and I'm here with uh, Brandon Edwards. Uh, he is a head coach for a travel baseball team. What do you, 12 U? 12 U team, yep. 12 U team. So um, just tell me a little bit of backstory about your, your travel team and uh, how you came about the Camwood Bats. All right. Um, so last summer I was looking at actually just kind of helping out with another team in the area. I've been out of baseball for a little while and, you know, had been doing some individual one-on-one -on -one stuff uh, last spring with a couple of kids and looked at kind of, you know, continuing work with those guys uh, onto another team and had an opportunity to join the organization that we're a part of now, which is the Cincinnati River Bats Baseball Club. Yeah. And went to uh, tryouts with them and we had such a great showing at tryouts. We had, you know, well over 70 kids come out for tryouts for, at the time, two teams. And the decision was made based on the amount of kids that we had and the limited spots that we had. Uh, I was approached with the opportunity to take on a third team. So uh, what ended up happening was the team that I took on is basically all the kids that didn't make the other two teams. Yeah. You know, so they were all really good ball players. Uh, I saw a lot of potential in them. You know, uh, haven't been involved in the game for a little while. You know, there were some certain some some things I was looking for. And then a lot of that was, hey, who can I teach the game of baseball to? You know, they may not be the best kids right now, but yeah. are these boys going to work hard? Um, yeah, yeah. And that's what I did. I built a team. Yeah, it's all about all about development. And, and built a team and, you know, and got the buy-in from the parents where, you know, we – our focus was going to be development. Our focus was going to be practice. So yeah. I ended up with uh, 12 uh, very dedicated young men. Uh, extremely hard workers, uh, you know, way beyond what I've seen, you know, if uh, above average, you know, these boys work hard. How we came across Camwood was, you know, I had a lot of kids that I was working with on some more technical things. Um, you know, they were at that point where it was time to get a little more technical with them. And we were looking at doing some one hand stuff. One of my assistant coaches, you know, kind of took it upon himself to see what was out there. Uh, you know, like I said, with me not being in the game for a while, um, you know, he started researching, hey, what's some of the trainers that are available and stuff like that. Um, he's got a kid on the team, and he came across the Camwood one-hand trainers is kind of where we initially looked at it. And yes. and then he he made the first step. He was kind of the guinea pig for us. You know, we saw saw some online stuff, you know, and, and he's one of those guys like, hey, if it looks like it'll work, there's some pretty good reviews. You know, he'll, he'll jump on it, and then I go back to him later, and I say, hey, man, uh, how'd that work out? <laughs> you know, like you think it's good, you know, that kind of thing. And he said, man, I really would like you to come over to the house and, and take a look at this. Um, you know, the, the whole concept behind it. I knew nothing about it. I hadn't yeah. seen anything, you know, not a big presence on Facebook, you know, not in the forums or anything like that, or any of those group pages. Um, you know, so I hadn't really seen anything yet. And, went over there and I looked at it and I said, man, you know what? This is a really good idea. This is a great concept. You know, I like, I like, you know, how the knob is. I like where the weight sits at with the hands. I see a lot of potential with this the thing. The very first thing, every time someone sees it, they see that knob right above the hands instantly. Yeah. I think it's a gimmick and that is yeah. a money. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, I think it's a great, you know, beyond, beyond just being a little bit different, a little bit catchy. Um, I was like, I, I see some science here. You know, I like the idea of overload. Um, you know, I like the idea of where that weight is positioned, and I could see how this could work. So I said, hey, let's do this. Let's take your kid and put your kid on it for 30 days. Because before, you know, before I go to our parents, and, and I ask a lot of our parents, you know, and before I go to them with anything, I want to know that, that it works. I don't want to just go to them with another good idea. Right. Yeah. Like, so I said, hey, let's take and the, and the kid's name is Noah. Noah's a great kid. and He works hard. I mean, just a super hardworking kid. And I said, all right, let's, let's do this with Noah and let's see what we get out of it. And, yeah. and we did. We, uh, we used Noah as a guinea pig. And, um, so you followed the All-American 30-Day program, right? So you, yeah, you yeah, yeah. So he, I mean, he went all in. He got the program and everything. Um, yeah, so when we started him in February on the program, his bat speed was 55.9 and an exit velocity of 55. After being on the program for, for 30 days, he jumped up to an exit velocity of 62 and increased his uh, bat speed as well. So the, the big thing that I saw with him was bat path, rotational acceleration, hand speed, 
you know, that's, that's really where I saw the big difference uh, with him initially. And he really just started squaring the ball up a lot better. Yeah, uh, that's where like the, the program, what we focus on and what we teach, and as you know already is, you know, I want to teach a kid how to stay inside the ball. I want to create yeah. that proper bat path. Yeah. That way, like you have uh, more room for error. Your bat stays in the zone a longer amount yeah, of time, exactly. which is going to increase your chance of barreling that ball up. So, like you said right there, you know, people go to that 30 day program and out of nowhere, they just start barreling the ball up. Can, like, exactly. And, uh, and it's because of that, it's because we teach how to stay inside the ball. And Noah, Noah, Noah was a great, uh, great initial, you know, kind of case study for us because, you know, great athlete, um, very strong kid. Uh, you know, hard worker, but he only played baseball for a couple of years. Yeah, you know, the swing mechanics weren't weren't where they needed to be yet. You know, he didn't understand kind of he didn't understand those concepts of keeping the hands inside the ball, taking the knob through the ball. He didn't understand you know getting extension, driving the ball to, you know to right center or how to do that. You yeah. know, like a lot of kids, he was trying to muscle the bat and he was throwing the bat head around yeah, and casting the bat. Yep. And, you know, trying to pull everything and pulling off of stuff. So in the fall, um, you know, it's just it, it wasn't where it needed to be at for high level baseball. And there's a lot of good baseball in this area. Um, yeah. You know, and it wasn't where it needed to be at. We struck out a lot. And a lot of that was due to bat path and exactly. casting. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, exactly. Especially at that age, you know, whenever, whenever they're not confident, yeah. uh, you know, get into that where they try to just throw the barrel instead of keep, uh, staying inside and they start coming around the ball, start flying off of that front shoulder, trying to pull yeah. everything to the left side of the field. And that's where the strikeouts just skyrocket, you know? Yeah. So Noah went through the program for 30 days, saw the good success. And then uh, what you did, you reached out to me right after that. And yeah. So, so right after that, I, I, um, I hit you up and um, you know, uh, cause I had, a couple of other people had recommended that I, you know, join this, you know, travel bats, uh, you know, group. And you know, there was a lot of dialogue going on on that, and, uh, you yeah. know, travel baseball bats, uh, Facebook page and stuff. And I started seeing more advertisements. And then with the success that we had with Noah, you know, reached out and I hit you up and said, you know what, we're just, we're going to go all in on this. Uh, and by all in, you know, I got the buy-in from the parents and, you know, we don't have the budget to, you know, to just buy the stuff up front for the kids. We're not backed by anybody financially. I mean, we're parent driven. So these parents are, these parents are the ones that are all in. So yeah. uh, half of our team, seven of our players decided to go ahead and, and make the jump and, you know, Hey, let's, let's see what happens. Uh, by the time, you know, we got the bats in and, you know, everything interaction with you was super simple, you know, Hey, here's what I've got, you know, what do you think? Recommendations, bat sizes, you know, all of that. It was very easy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> you take, you got a kid swinging a, you know, a, a 31, you know, uh, 3121 or a 3123. You just get the same length bat, um, exactly. you know, yeah. that, you know, that they're swinging. So we went 31 and we went 31 youth. I had one kid that was at a place where I wanted him to go a little bit heavier. So we went uh, 31 adult with him. Um, yep. you know, he swings a 31 inch game bat and I kind of wanted that to be there, uh, as a, as a test for him as well. Um, you know, cause he's a kid that has really good mechanics already and we're just trying to get him a little bit stronger and get him a little bit more explosive. Yep. So he, he's a kid that, you know, barrels the ball up well already. So that was, we decided to go 31 adult with him and see what we could get. And I think that that was a good move too. You know, sure. and, and that's just going to help him yeah. develop even quicker. You know, it's going to build that strength, yeah. build that back yeah. much quicker. So, even even with a you know even with a twelve year old kid, and you know in this case, and you yeah. know one thing that I think a, a lot of people should know though about this team is you know there was people have hit me up uh, just seeing because I did a, a post on a Facebook post on our team page and I shared it to a couple of the groups of yeah. what our progress looked like and. You know, and it was realistic, yeah. earned progress. You know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a fluke. Everything was based off of averages. It wasn't like I had one kid do this. I laid it out there. We had seven kids, and we had you know some of the kids performed or, or had more improvement than other kids. The biggest thing is you started the program, and the kids started seeing some good success in that first week. Yeah. And then COVID nineteen happened. Yeah, so they shut everything down. So, 
so yeah, I had, I had about 10 days with the kids to kind of teach them the program, you know, like uh, to coach them through the program. So six of my seven kids that did the program, um, I had them for, I don't know, five or six practice sessions, I think is what it ended up being where it was like, okay, Hey, here's the drills we're doing. We're going to do this. You know, this is what this drill is. And then I was able to kind of make some on the spot corrections, uh, you know, with the one hand drill, really focusing on taking the knob through the ball, exactly. uh, driving the ball to right center, where to position the tee at in reference to their body, you know, how to kind of isolate that form. Um, exactly. You know, so we, we had that opportunity that started for us uh, early in March. You know, we got the bats, uh, you know, from you. We got a couple of tees from you. Um, yeah. You know, it looked everything looked phenomenal, got it, unpackaged it. The kids were excited. We ended up having, you know, five or six coaching sessions with them and then boom, COVID-19 hit. And it was like, wow, like we were literally, you know, we just made this huge investment yeah. and then, and you and I talked about it, like, yeah. is this going to carry through? Is this going to work? And, you know, and you were kind of, you know, you were encouraging to me because you said, uh, you know, it, it makes you feel good when you call the owner of the company and the owner of the company says, Hey, just, tr just trust the kids. If they do the program, you're going to see the improvement. So exactly. yeah. one thing we can say about their improvement was it, it belongs to them. Like all the credit goes to those kids and how hard they work because yeah. they continued to do it at home on their own. And yes, exactly. I got, you know, videos and, you know, kids would send some stuff and you've got a great Camwood, uh, 30 day all American, um, you know, Facebook, Facebook group that you run through it and, and you give tremendous feedback. And I love just kind of sitting back. Like when I see my kids, you know, on my team, when I see those guys post, I don't comment. Exactly. Like I want to sit back and kind of just see, cause they get to hear from me, you know, yeah. like I want them to hear from other people. And I think it's great. That you're actively involved in giving them, you know, some, some tremendous feedback. So that's uh, the thing is, you know, I just, I want to make sure that they get the proper training. You know, I don't want the, I don't want to just hand them the program and say, go, you know, I, I want to make sure they're doing the drills correctly. Cause yeah. for me, I mean, I wish I had that kind of coaching whenever I was younger. Yeah. You know, I grew up and um, I mean, I love my coaches. They were good people, but you know, they uh, baseball wasn't their job. We'll just yeah. say that. that they were just there cause their kid was on the team type stuff. So, I mean, that speaks to one of the questions that I got from the success that we had was, do you think this success that your team has had is a result of your kids just hitting more? Yeah. And the answer is no. Like my kids hit, like the kids on our team were practicing, you know, like I said, we, we did over 80 practices, you know, from August through the fall into the winter, we had over 40 hitting sessions just in the winter. So December to February, we had over 40 hitting sessions. These boys were swinging the bat. Like, it's not that these are kids sitting on the couch eating ho-hos and bonbons and, exactly. and playing video games. Like, these guys were coming to practice 8 o'clock in the morning on Sundays in the middle of the winter. You know, parents thinking I'm crazy, and I might be a little bit. But, you know, like, these kids were coming, and they were working hard already. And then we put the cam wood bats in their hands. And, yeah. you know, even those guys that were already working hard saw the improvements that we saw on their own, at home, during COVID-19. And that, that's the thing that I like is the fact that, you know, um, a little bit of disaster struck and, you know, yeah. you're not able to work with your kids anymore. So what you do is you go and you print off that little booklet that's right there behind you. <laughs> yeah. Have you, printed one off have you every that boys player on the team <laughs> and gave it to them and said, have fun at home, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you left it up to them to want to get better and to want to continue and do it, you know. Yeah. And you're not going to get the progress if you don't want it. And that's yeah, and I, I, stayed, I stayed engaged and, you know, I stayed, you know, talking to them, hey, send me some videos, you know, and, you know, and that's, I mean, that's, to me, that's part of being a coach. You know, yeah. like, I'm not just, hey, hey, here's your 30-day program. Trey says it's going to work. You know, yeah. you, better, you better be good when I see you again. Like, that's, <laughs> that's not how I do things. I'm, yeah. I'm very – very engaged, talking to them. You know. I also want to talk to you about, you know, one of the videos that you posted, and uh, you had him out on the field uh, hitting off of a tee, and he just sitting there dropping bombs to left field. <laughs> so, so that was actually um, – so I did. I, I posted a video of a kid that um, – he, he was actually one of the kids that I worked with uh, 
in the spring uh, of last year, kind of one on one. So yeah. the spring of nineteen, you know, the kid is a solid pitcher, um, you know, great control, and you know, one of the things that he struggled with was was hitting. You know, yeah. back then didn't have a didn't have a ton of power, didn't have a ton of pop, really wasn't making contact. The bat path, you know, wasn't where it needed to be at. So. Um, you know, there were, there were a lot of things and, and I had an opportunity to kind of work with him and he's actually the kid that, you know, I originally was going to facilitate just trying to help him get on a good team. And I was going to help, help out with, uh, yeah. his name is Caleb Dreesen. And, you know, what's great about, about Caleb's story is Caleb was a kid that when I started working with him, I, I love tea work first off. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that can knock the tea, but you know, I, I love the tea. So Caleb was one of those kids where uh, one thing that I really like to do is take a tee out to a baseball field. And I think you get a better idea on a baseball field yep. of, hey, how does this swing feel? And what is it that I'm trying to accomplish? And you so see all the of our, the ball as well. And that's the thing with me is I take my kids out on the field just to see the flight. So if yes. I'm, if yes. I'm yes. having a ball to right center, I want to see backspin on that ball. I don't want to yes. see side spin. If I see side spin, I'm slapping it over there instead of driving it over there. And that's yep. where I'm not getting fully extended through it. So that's why I love taking my kids out to the field just to see the spin in the flight. Exactly. Like when they can see the path of the ball, they can see the yep. spin of the ball. That gives them a lot of feedback. And, you know, yes, we've got access to, you know, rap sodos and we've got blast motions and, you know, like we can, we can do that kind of stuff, but not all the time. But what a kid can do is take a tee out to a baseball field, stick it on home plate, hit the ball, see where the ball goes, see how the ball reacts off of the bat. And that's where we were with Caleb, you know, uh, last, last summer. You know, we were at a place where we would tee a ball up and, and he would hit it, and we literally were playing home run derby to keep it fun for him for balls that got hit out of the infield in the air. Wow. So if, if, if we did this, I mean, in August, right? Like, if he teed the ball up, uh, he made my team because he's a good pitcher. Um, yeah. You know, like, and has potential in other places, and and the kid absolutely loves the game and works his, you know, works his behind off. Like, I mean, yeah. love having this kid on my team. So anyway, we tee the ball up though, and and he'd hit it, and we call it a home run because it made it out of a twelve-year-old infield, off the tee. Like that's where we were at with him in August. So through our, our, you know, fall practices and winter practices, we saw a lot of, a lot of improvement with him. Um, you know, when we started the program with him in March, yeah. his exit velocity was 56.64 miles an hour. Yeah. Caleb hit like two or three of them off the fence, off a hack attack throwing 50 miles an hour. Yeah. So you know what, you know, 50 miles an hour does for exit velocity. Yeah. You know, so here's, here's Caleb in, in August, he, you know, can't barely hit it out of the infield in the air. You know, we're calling those home runs when they leave and we're getting excited about them to keep him excited, right? Yeah. Then we yeah. get to December, he still can't hit it out of that same baseball field with a 50-mile-an-hour hack attack, right? And then we introduce in March, we introduced the Camwood system to him. Yep. And uh, we had an opportunity with him, uh, you know, keeping it under 10. We had to make sure we kept it under 10 and all that stuff. So we were in compliance with stay at home orders and all that and went out to the ball field at the end of March with a couple of the kids, not knowing what the results would be, but really just kind of teaching them, Hey, this is what you've been doing at home on your own. Now let's see how that translates to the baseball field. Yep. And every one of the kids that were out there for that session were just hitting bombs. And, and when I say every one of them, Caleb was one of them. He ended up hitting, I think, 12, 13, 14 home runs. And his mom was there, and she was videotaping him. And uh, I couldn't have been more proud of the kid, you know, because he's, he's not, you know, he's not that – you know, I have several kids on my team, team that can just – they can rake. Yeah. You know, so but he's one of those kids that, like, when the first one left, you know, I'm kind of sitting there getting a little, you know, yeah. teary-eyed. I'm like, did that just happen? You know, <laughs> can you do it again? You know, can it happen again? I'm like, Mom, get over here and videotape this because – I like the kids to see when they do well, so it, you know, yeah. encourages them, right? So, sure, for sure. Sure as heck, man. He ended up hitting, I don't know, I, I think we got 12 of them on video. I think he ended up hitting 13 or 14 home runs or something, oh, you know, after it was all said and done. And I put together a little YouTube video for him. But, I mean, you can see his swing. I mean, he was a – he turned into a kid swinging the bat with intent. 
you know, swinging the bat like he knew, I'm like, I got a chance of hitting this ball out of here. And he was carrying the fence, you know, in one area it was 220. Uh, you know, down the line, I want to say, I think it's 180 with a 20 foot tall, you know, you know wall. Yeah. You know, and he's sitting there. I mean, he he hit one off the top of the scoreboard, uh, right. and you know, out there it's at you know 200 feet plus the top of the scoreboard. So I saw that, and I'm like, wow, you know, I can't wait to see what this exit data looks like. And for him, his uh, his exit velocity uh, ended up increasing 5.96 miles per hour. So in in 30 days, you know, we got a 5.96 mile an hour exit velocity, and what that meant for him was. Instead of hitting the ball where it's one and two hop into the fence, now he's hitting them off the top of the scoreboard, That's off the tee. Yeah. You know, like, so he went from zero, zero home runs off of a tee to hitting 12 to 13 in just one session of being back yeah. on the field after the Camwood program. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And, that, is, and, that is insane. You know, going, going, back to, going back to Noah, you know, I would not want to be a worm on an infield you know, like prior to this with Noah hitting because he's swinging straight down into the ball, right? Yeah. I mean, and just mashing the ball right down into the dirt. And I'm like, hey, no, we got to understand, man, it doesn't matter how hard you hit it if you hit it right down into the dirt. So, again, this program for him taught him, you know, it taught him back path. You know, like he right. understood what that meant. It taught him how to stay inside the ball and, and carry that knob through it and not pull out and rotate off. And I got – I mean, Noah's hitting the ball. He was hitting the ball off the tee 250-plus feet. I, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. We had uh, – for him, I think he ended up with uh, almost 14 mile an hour from – so he yeah. did the program twice. He improved 14 miles per hour on his exit velocity. And in that second session – in the second session, he still improved 6.42 miles per hour after doing the program in the second time. So, yeah. so you know, the first time he did eight mile an hour gain in 30 days and then saw the results and said, Hey, I'm going to do that again. And, and stuck and, with it because I mean, he's part of the team. So he's like, Hey, I'm doing it again with the team. And this is what we're going to, we didn't change bats. We didn't do anything. Yeah. He just did the program again, again. Yeah. you know, and, and saw another, you know, six and a half mile per hour increase on his exit velocity. That's awesome. now, now the kid's just hitting bombs. So, I mean, he's having a ton of fun. You know, and when, when kids start hitting like that, they have more fun. You know, exactly. everybody says, like, winning's not everything and all that kind of stuff. Well, I've never met a kid in my life that had fun losing. I and I've never, I've never <laughs> seen a kid at practice when everybody else is hitting home runs have yeah. fun when they don't. You know, like, exactly. when you see that kid hit their first home run or their, you know, 12, 13, 14 of them in the same session, the kid's yeah. having fun. Yeah, you know, so exactly. That's, that's but you couldn't wipe the smile off their face either. Oh, man. Like he, he, and he loved it. And I, I went home and, you know, made that video that night and stayed up late. And I sent it to his yeah. mom and said, hey, you know, have him go on to YouTube. And he was, he was super happy. So the, all the progress that I've seen of all the kids inside the group is just amazing. Yeah. I, just, I always knew that this program was good because of my results with it. And I've done this program with kids before uh, becoming the owner of Camwood and seeing really good results. But I guess I knew it was good, but I didn't know it was like this good. I mean, the results I'm seeing are great. I had a dad the other day call me. His son gained 20 miles an hour on ball exit speeds in 30 days. Yeah, that that does not surprise me. You know, like, especially for, you know, again, you know, my guys were practicing – all the way through, you know, end of summer, fall, winter, 40 hitting sessions in the winter, you know, and uh, I'm not the best coach in the world. You know, I, I do the best that I can, right? But, uh, you know, like we're out there, we're working hard, and these guys were working hard. Yeah. And we introduced this and still had uh, one, two, three, three of our guys over seven miles per hour, and – Three more of our guys were right at almost six miles an hour. Um, I mean, that's that is pretty phenomenal. Actually, as a as an average, yeah. So so we had three guys over seven miles an hour increase in exit velocity. And that's on averages. That's not even a top speed. That's consistent. Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm not one of those guys. It's like, hey, let's you know, let's shoot off you know firecrackers because you had that one hit hit yeah. seventy miles an hour, like. Yeah. You know, yeah, those numbers are in there, but that's out of 15 swings. Yeah. So when I calculated our data, those averages, you know, like where I've got uh, like one of my boys, uh, 
Adam Murray. Uh, he's got a average exit velocity of 64.1. Yeah. That's an average of 70. He hit several balls in the 70s yeah. at 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's a kid that, like, 64 was the average. But, you know, he did. He got into, you know, a 69, a 70. You know, like, to see that. But the biggest thing that I saw in the improvement in, in the numbers was consistency. And that's what's crazy to me is, um, you know, with Noah in just two months, increased his average velocity 14 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. That's nuts. And, and Noah, Noah literally just turned 12. Like, his birthday was last month. So he literally just turned 12. And that kid is hitting – you know, he went from hitting exit velocities in the low 50s when we started yeah. to now he's hitting high. I mean, his average is 68.5, just turned 12, and he's hitting numbers in the mid-70s. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's – That is nuts. That, that, is, that is nuts. And, you know, there's another kid that, uh, you know, we just saw, like, absolutely tremendous uh, success with. He actually tied – so our smallest guy on the team is a kid named Caden Duggar, and yeah. it speaks volumes to him. He posts, he and his parents post quite a few videos in the uh, in the forum. And one of the things that I really liked about it was, um, and I've been talking to him and talking to him about he finishes too high, you know, and his attack angle was really steep, and yeah. you know he's given himself a really small window to make hard contact. You gotta be perfectly and, on time in order to. Be. Yeah, you gotta be perfectly on time, right? So he's got a really small window to hit the ball hard, and and what I saw with him was, you know, very similar to Caleb, is when he would hit it, you know, we were we're looking at like, man, that's awesome. It carried out of the infield. Yeah. You know, like so that's a that's a victory for us. Well, what what he experienced from training with the bat is getting an understanding again of taking the hands through the ball, taking the knob through the yeah. ball inside out staying on the ball and, and driving the ball and and the feedback that he received from you and the and the group you know stuff and it was good for him to hear it from you too yeah. because he ended up coming over to my house and saying hey look you said it to me you know Trey has said it to me you know yeah. as well. what do I need to do you know we pulled the blast motion out we set it up and said okay look here's your attack angle this is what I want this number to be all right it can't be you know, up here, 26, 27, 28, 30, 32. That's I want where he started. To be on path, and I want to see, like, you know, somewhere between 7 to 12. Yeah. And he set that up, and he had that bat in his hand, and I worked with him for, for one session. Uh, he really understood it. His swing completely changed, and he ended up adding uh, over 7 mile an hour. You know, he tied for the best improvement on the team to, you know, now here we are, this, you know, little tiny guy, uh, yeah. you know, who's hitting now 57.6 mile an hour exit velocity and improved over, you know, almost seven and a half miles an hour, 30 days. Awesome. And is you know, awesome. making better contact. You know, so, you know, I don't think this is, I think you see an increase in bat speed, but I wouldn't put this just in the category of this is a tool to improve your bat speed. Oh, this absolutely not. Make you a better hitter. Yeah, this this program wasn't created to increase your bat speed. This program yeah. will teach you the right mechanics. Exactly. To take your hands to the ball and create that proper bat path. Yeah. Bat speed is a byproduct of it. Yep, yeah, and, uh, and and Cooper is a perfect example of that because, you know, it improved his hand speed. It improved his rotational acceleration. Yeah, we saw a mile and a half improvement on his bat speed, but we saw – seven mile an hour improvement on his exit velocity. Yeah. The that's exit velocity is well actually that's the number that matters. That's the number yeah. that I always keep track of. Yep. Is you know how hard is that ball coming off the bat. So yeah. Yeah. So you know those kind of numbers is awesome. It's yeah. for for all those parents out there that are they've seen the camo, they've seen the program, they're on the edge, but they haven't bought yet. What would you say to them? Yeah, I mean I've I've even got some of those parents on my team. Like I <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I, I, I don't know I don't know how you don't do it. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I've, I've bought the t-ball bats for my three-year-old and my five-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like we're, we are out there, and you know, I'm starting them. We'll see where that where that takes us one day. I'm 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 that dad. Hey, you know? I start them young, man. I said, yeah, yeah. So my, my ten-month-old, he his toy in his room is a Camwood bat. I say, 
<laughs> kids don't know what it is whenever he's two. <laughs> there you go, right? So, um, you know, I there's the there's the really super intense coach in me that's like, this is a no brainer, guys. Like, you have got to get this thing. You know, you expect so much out of your kid, and you make such a financial investment. You know, especially at this you know select and travel baseball level. You know, if you're going to put all of that money into, you know, playing these games and traveling around and doing stuff, you know, give your kids, give your kids the resources to, to get better as well. Um, you know, like, and cause the, the other kids are out there doing it. And, you know, when the other kids are doing it and they're getting better, you know, your kid is likely going to get frustrated if they don't make the same improvement. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm fortunate on our team that, you know, the guys that, the guys that didn't jump right in were some of my better hitters. You know, if I can get those guys to also do this program, wow. You know, like, if we can all continue to advance, you know, at this pace together as a team, it's just going to make everybody on the team better. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would encourage anybody. It teaches them ownership. It teaches them responsibility. Uh, it teaches them work ethic. Then they see the results, and it motivates them. Exactly. So, you know, I, I just I, I love the way that you've got it structured. Uh, you know, and that's that's not even getting into the, the science of the bat and you know why it works. Uh, you know, it's a this goofy looking thing with a weird knob <laughs> and a weight over top of the hands, right? It, like it uh, works, uh, but it's, <laughs> it's it's very functional and it serves its purpose and it it works. Um, you know, so anybody out there thinking about getting one, I I, I wouldn't hesitate. I, w- I would not hesitate. And I, I say that as a coach, you know, uh, unless you're playing my team, right? Like if you're playing against yeah. us, I don't think you guys need one. You guys are, you know, you guys are good to go. Yeah, you don't, you're good. I, that's, yeah, don't, that's don't go out there and grab one. You know, this is just probably a waste of your time if you're playing yeah. against me. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on here with me and telling your story of your team and the success that y'all saw with it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm looking forward to hearing all the, the stories y'all have once we get back to playing some baseball. Yeah, we're just. I'm yeah, sure we're, it's gonna be a bunch of run rules. I'm gonna get a bunch. Uh, of tech we got, we've got some really, we've got some really good teams in this area. Uh, we we play a lot of, a uh, lot of really quality teams. We don't have an easy game on the schedule. So, but I I, yeah, I expect to see us out there. You know, see the boys out there doing well. I yeah. think so. I'll definitely give you some feedback on that. Oh yeah, for sure.